parents, have you ever heard anything creepy or unexplainable through your baby monitor? I hate baby monitors. This thread confirms my suspicions that baby monitors are nothing but portals into heck. Dang freaking right. When my daughter was about 8 months old I was in her bedroom cleaning while she was playing in her crib. I had her monitor turned down, but when I noticed the red lights moving, signaling noise, I turned it up. I heard, plain as day, a child screaming something along the lines of I'm sorry, no please no the worst part is that I could actually hear him being hit. Not slapped, but seriously beat. I lived in a heavily populated area of Pittsburgh so there was no telling where this was happening. I grabbed my dog there and ran outside anyway, hoping to hear the child scream from an apartment or house so I could call the police, but I couldn't zero in on it. Such a horrible feeling, not being able to stop this poor child from being beat. I never looked at any of my neighbors the same. The ghost stories don't bother me, but that is horrifying. That would surely haunt me for a good while. I used to babysit two kids, and they each had a video monitor that picked up sound. I put them to bed and was sitting downstairs doing homework, and I thought they were both asleep because it had been like a half hour since I had put them in bed, and neither kid was shifting around anymore. It was silent except for their breathing through the monitors. It was pitch black outside and the parents wouldn't be home for another couple of hours. All of a sudden I heard a little kid's voice singing. I couldn't tell what the voice was saying, but it sounded really creepy. I looked at the monitors, and neither kid had moved, went up to their rooms and checked on them both. Apparently the younger one, 3 years old, would sing to himself when he couldn't sleep, and his mom didn't tell me that. He was laying perfectly still singing softly, and I nearly crap myself when I heard it through the monitor. That's incredibly adorable but completely terrifying to live through. Yes, it was creepy when it happened until I figured out what it was. I have a son and he wasn't even talking yet when I heard the alphabet sung by a girl through his monitor. It scared me and I went and got my sister and we sat there and heard it again. We live across the street from a daycare. It was creepy until I remembered that. Yeah haunted daycare with a little girl that died there. Baby breathing heavy all of a sudden. That's the worst feeling. This isn't something I heard from my kid's room, but it was something creepy heard over a baby monitor. I did that home care for a little while, and there was this one client I had a couple of years ago. The lady I assisted had dementia, and she was just at the point where the good days were fading. We had a baby monitor in her room so we could hear when she was waking up. I'll go ahead and mention that we also had bells pinned to her sheets so that when she was trying to get up on her own, full risk, we would hear the bells jingle. It was common to hear her down in her room talking to that man, asking who are you and what is it to an empty room. One evening her and I were in the living room together by ourselves, and I heard the bells start jingling on their own over the baby monitor. There was no ceiling fan, the AC heat wasn't running, no windows were open. I always had bad feelings in her house, with things like cabinets opening and one really creepy time where it's sounding like footsteps coming down the hallway which really scared me. I'm honestly glad I will never have to go into that house again. There is something terrifying about the idea of having dementia and being able to see ghosts because of it. That would be a confusing place to be. I was at a friend's house one night, and she was putting her little boy to bed. Her baby monitor had a camera built in and was installed at the foot of the crib. She also had one of those mattress sensors in the crib. Well, we are sitting down, watching a movie and the receiver for the monitor is on the coffee table in front of us. The sound sensor spikes and the screen goes white. She picks it up, and all you can make out on the screen is an eerie face. We go running into the room and her kid is sound asleep. We look around and don't see anything strange, so we go back to the movie. About 10 minutes later, the same thing happens. I get up quietly and sneak into his room, while she stays on the couch. I catch the kid standing up in his crib, with his face right up against the monitor. He is smiling like crazy and giggling. He looks over at me and quickly lays down and acts like he is asleep. I let her know what's up, and she laughs it off. A few nights later she tells me the same thing happened to the monitor, but her boy was sitting on the couch next to her, at the time. Just when I thought it was going to end on a normal note. Jesus. Back when all baby monitors transmitted on 49 megahertz, I used to talk to them with a higher powered radio I modified to transmit on those same frequencies. 
I'm sure some parent freaked out over that. I was a weird kid. All other stories explained by this. Heard a strange hissing noise at 3.30am through the monitor and our movement pad went off walked into the room and he was fast asleep. He proceeded to wake up the next morning and tell me that for the last few sleeps he has been picked up and flown to a place in Ireland where his six brothers and sisters live he's managed to name them and they remain the same each time I ask him about it. Safe to say me and his mother are slightly scared. This reminds me of a corrupt Peter Pan. My daughter's toys coming on by themselves. When she was little, less than a year old, I've always blamed it on faulty batteries because that is what keeps me from pee my pants. Something similar happened to my cousin in the middle of the night, but when she went to turn it off, she saw that there were no batteries. Hopefully this fits well enough because it was a baby monitor that set it off. Okay, so my daughter is now almost 2 and has long since moved into her own room. We have one of those video monitor things where you can see hear the baby on this little TV thing or you can turn the picture off and just get sound. So one night maybe a month ago I'm sitting in bed, scrolling through reddit or something and I start hearing my daughter babbling to herself. Now, it's really late, like 1 or 2 in the morning. Much later than she is ever awake unless something is wrong and she is sick or cutting a tooth or something. So I turn the picture on the monitor on and see her standing up in her crib facing sort of diagonally away from the camera. I can see her hands in front of her but only like half of her face. Now is a good time to mention that we have been teaching her ASL since she was about 3 months old and she has been responding and conversing in sign since about 10 months. I can see her signing things like nice and silly and fun and oddly enough. No, don't like and bear, of course being the good and loving mother I am, and really not wanting to deal with an overly sleepy baby in the morning, I get up to see what the heck she is doing. When I get to her room she is still standing up and signing babbling towards the far corner of her room. I ask her what she is doing and who she is talking to and she signs says, as best as she can, friend which she does with her whole hands and not just her index fingers and signs bear again, I tell her that no, see bear who is actually one of her stuffed toys, is in bed behind her not in the corner of the room but she just giggles at me and signed says silly and mommy. I can see she is wide awake so I sit down in the rocker next to her bed and try to figure out what woke her up but all she will tell me is friend and bear and occasionally duck down like she is hiding and making shhh noises. I finally get fed up and ask her who friend bear is and her response literally gave me chills because she doesn't speak well yet but she managed to say, very clearly and with the most serious face a 20 month old can pull off, no name, no name, shhhhhh. Well now I am well and truly freaked out so I tell her to ask no name friend bear to go home because it is too late to play and I did what any good loving mother would do. I gave her a pacifier, went back to my room, turned off the monitor entirely and hid under the overs in my room where my good and loving husband would protect me from nameless invisible bears. I guess this would be the best place to leave my baby monitor story. My family used to have a baby monitor set up at the top of our stairs so that when myself or my brother were downstairs on the family computer, my mom wouldn't have to yell to us to come upstairs. She could simply talk at a normal level near the monitor and we would know to come up. It was really handy actually. Anyways, one night I am home alone as my parents are at my brother's hockey game, and I am downstairs on the computer playing Roller Coaster Tycoon. The monitor was always on full volume and as a kid, anytime I would hear a crack or a noise I would obviously stop playing and listen carefully. Well on this particular night I heard a bang, nothing that was too startling, kinda sounded like a cupboard door shutting. I paused my game and stared at the monitor, I then heard my front door unlock, the door didn't open, I just heard it simply unlock, my heart dropped, it was eerily quiet, about 10 seconds after the door unlocked I heard a massive loud bang. Like someone stomping on the hardwood upstairs, and the baby monitor went aloud static. I immediately start crying and hid under the computer desk for an hour before my parents came home. When my parents got home they asked me if I had let anyone in because the door was unlocked. I explained what happened but they couldn't figure anything out. There was nothing taken. Then baby monitor was still plugged in, and there were no signs of anyone else being in the house. To this day thinking about that night gives me chills. TL. Doctor heard a bang. Cried like a bee. I dunno man. I would have held out for a more relevant thread before sharing my creepy baby monitor story. 
On a less creepy note, I was accidentally responsible for my boss hearing terrifying sounds through her kid's baby monitor. My boss kid was born in 2005, and the grudge was still kind of a big deal, especially with the sequel approaching. I taught the kiddo to make that creepy voice clicky sound. She liked to mimic, and it was pretty hilarious to hear her do it. Unfortunately, she decided to bust it out at around 1 o'clock in the morning at one point, and it terrified the crap out of my boss and her husband. I got fricky texts in the early hours of the morning for like a month, and then again, when I taught her the chorus of never gonna give you up. For a while there, it was a toss up as to whether they'd wake up to creepy ghost sounds or annoying songs. They were, less than pleased. You rickrolled them with their own baby, genius. I don't have kids yet, but apparently when I was little my parents used to hear an indistinguishable mumbling coming from my room on a weekly basis that was blatantly a man's voice. These were the same nights as when my toys would turn on and start playing music in the middle of the night. I have no idea if this is true or not, but for as long as I knew her, my grandmother she used to say that my grandfather, he passed away when I was just over a year old, was always watching over me. My husband went upstairs to put my son to sleep. He came back down and we started watching a movie. The window was open and we could faintly hear our neighbor's dog barking two houses down. I look over at the video monitor, in night vision mode, and see my son standing up and a woman walk in and pick him up. He gladly went with her. I was just in disbelief. Told husband to go check. He went up there and kiddo was lying there like trying to sleep here. What's your deal? He came back down and we just kind of sat there dumbfounded until we heard the neighbor's dog barking again, but on the baby monitor in our son's room. Took us about an hour to finally realize they had the same monitor as us and we were watching their kid's room. I don't know what's scarier, the terror of seeing something like that with all the initial confusion, or the fact that people can apparently watch your child's room if they just have the same monitor. Based on this thread alone, I have decided that before I have kids, I need to be rich so I can build a brand new house and hire a nanny to literally be with the baby 24 stroke 7. This way no dead grandpas can make noises in the kids room and I don't have to deal with the little heck portals. You could build on top of an Indian burial ground, then that would ruin everything. My parents told me of the ghost of the little white house when I was about 13 or 14. The whole conversation started with some talk of ghosts. I'm not exactly sure how but it led to my mom telling me of the ghost nanny that I used to have as a baby. She told me that although I never cried much, the nights I would start crying they would awake to the crying over the baby monitor. This would be quickly followed by the sound of the rocking chair in my bedroom rocking and I would stop crying. She told me that they would often come into my room and find bottles that neither of them had given me. The creepiest story she told me was the story of my almost death. One of my grandmothers was supposed to be watching me because both my parents were at work but she was doing something or left. Not a great grandmother, but I had apparently become wrapped up in my blanket and was beginning to suffocate. Well about the same time my other grandmother, fantastic grandma, got this strange feeling that she needed to check on me and apparently the feeling was so strong that she left work and came to the house to find me just in time that I didn't die. My mother surely believed in it and it was a pretty convincing story when she told it. At the end of the story, she told me that right before we moved into our new home, she thanked the ghost for all that it had done for the family and for keeping me safe. I am going to pretend all of the stories it are like this. When my oldest sister was a baby, my mom had just put her down for a nap and went to wash dishes. She had the baby monitor on the counter by the sink. Her then husband was at work so she was home alone. After a while she heard a man's voice coming through, singing a lullaby. No one was in the nursery. My uncle has a handful of stories, but I'll tell one of the better ones. One night over the baby monitor, they heard whispering and what sounded like my cousin's voice. Strangely though, they heard another voice that sounded like my grandma's. She passed a year before this. They go into her room and asked her who she was talking to, and she says I was talking to grandma. She helped me find my doll. The doll was on the floor, but when they checked on her it was in her crib. I could go on for a while with other stories if anyone is interested. This doesn't quite fit, but one time my friend and I were chilling in his garage, and his baby was asleep in his crib inside. Then we hear static from the baby monitor, 
Followed by this really creepy, raspy voice whispering I've come for the child. Turns out it was just my friend's brother who had walked in the front door of the house. He had a key, and, upon realizing we were out in the garage, thought he'd freak us out a little. It worked. Thank god, the one explicable sane story in this shitstorm of madness. We were at a party, where my friend and his wife went to check on the baby, who was sleeping upstairs. It turned out, they forgot the baby monitor downstairs, on the table. As it is voice activated, it turned on. When they entered the room, and transmitted their conversation to everyone, including the part, where the wife agreed to a quick BJ, we were polite and switched off the baby monitor, but their face was priceless. When they came back downstairs, and noticed the baby monitor on the table. Not me, but my grandmother tells this story pretty often whenever any sort of ghost conversation comes up. My parents moved into this old house in CT when my middle brother was a baby and my oldest brother was about 10. I was not born yet. The house was pretty haunted, to the point that to this day my oldest brother won't talk about it. After several weeks of finding him sleeping in the hallway outside my parents' door, they decided maybe he needed a little vacation. At this point my parents were in denial about their undead housemates. So they didn't mention my oldest brother's behavior to my grandmother who agreed to watch my middle brother while my parents took him to Disney World. The first night my grandmother stayed at the house she a woman talking about my brother through the monitor. Then she heard some faint singing. Wanting it to be something logical my grandmother assumed she left the TV on in the bedroom. My brother's crib was in my parents room. She went up there. No TV. No radio. Just my infant brother laughing at absolutely nothing. My grandmother basically spent the rest of the week terrified, and wouldn't go back to our house after my parents returned. She had some other strange things happen, but notes the baby monitor talk as one of the scariest experiences she's ever had. My parents toughed out that house for about a year, until one day all the china came flying out of the china cabinet. My mom says she's never packed and gotten out of the house that fast. They stayed in a hotel until they sold it. I blame no one but myself for clicking this thread at this time of night. I was babysitting my niece once while I was staying at my brother's place and they had the baby camera set up so I could see her on the little TV it came with. I was studying and started dozing off when I heard some whispering and realized it was coming from the monitor, though I initially thought it was some feedback or something, but when I looked at the TV there was a dark shadow near her crib. I have never been more terrified in my life but the shadow was clearly there where it had not been before. I ran to her room and looked around and saw nothing but I took her the heck out of there. I went back to the TV and the shadow was clearly gone. I told my brother what happened and he pulled me aside and told me not to mention it to my sister-in-law because she'll freak out, but that he had seen that same thing several times now, with the same whispering. They stayed in that house for about 4 more years and when my niece was just learning to talk she would tell her mom about her special friend. This to this day scares the crap out of me. When they moved out, my brother told me my niece had become inconsolably sad because she would miss her friend. Her mom would tell her she could bring him along but all she would say was that he couldn't leave the house. We have never to this day told her about that dang shadow, and she apparently never saw it. Creepy, but I have a confession to make. We used to get interference from another baby monitor on our baby monitor. When this would happen, my husband and I would grab the monitor out of our daughter's room, and then say crazy stuff into it. No threats or anything, but we'd speak gibberish into it or moan like ghosts. Juvenile. I know, we were young. My mom tells this story every time she gets the chance. We had the old baby monitors that all play on the same frequency, and one night she had laid me down for bed. After about an hour of me sleeping she hears a baby screaming and a man yelling. Then smack, screaming, smack smack, and more screaming. Turns out next door neighbor was beating the holy living crap out of his baby for crying and she recognized his voice. It's called the cops and he was arrested on spot. Way to go mom. I was just coming home from work and my two sister-in-laws had been babysitting my one year old daughter. They told me they had just laid my daughter down for a nap. Then one sat in the living room, and one went to the bathroom. Suddenly the one in the living room heard whispering through the monitor. At the same time the sill that had been in the bathroom was walking by and heard it from my daughter's room. Then my daughter started to freak the heck out, screaming and crying. 
They of course got her the heck out of there, and I walked in the door. Now my house was not a big house, and my daughter was always adventurous. After that day she would not so much as got within 5 feet of her own doorway. We tried to put her to bed that night and the second we shut the door she screamed and cried again, so we allowed her to sleep in our bed. The next day was the same, just walking by the doorway to the bathroom freaked her out. Luckily we were moving a few days later to a new house so we moved her crib into our bedroom and she slept perfectly. She still says she doesn't want to go back to the old scary house to this day. She is 3. You have been visited by the wealth rat subscribe in 12 seconds and he will share his wealth with you. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.